Hello, Biohackathon 2018. This is my fifth one, and I'm very excited to be here. I have a very long title, but really what I'm trying to say here, if I get this to go, is that we are slowly making progress. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Evan Bolton. I work on the PubChem project. I'm the program head of chemistry at NCBI. Uh, we have this PubChem resource, and it's an archive. It contains chemical substances and biological activities. And we really what we do is we integrate a bunch of authoritative content in, and we really cater to data scientists, provide lots of programmatic APIs, because we have huge amounts of information. Basically, we're talking about tens of millions, hundreds of millions of things against millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of things. Chemistry touches everything. Everything is chemistry when it comes to the biomedical sciences. We contain so many billions of links. You know, we were asking really fundamental questions. Are these links real? Is there any evidence that tells us this is a good link or this is a bad link? Can we put some type of a measure on this? Do we know which ones are new? Which ones are dodgy, you know, not so good? You know, is there a context behind some of these and so on? But how do they interrelate? How do we organize these in some sort of way? Uh, what you see there is a graph of the PubChem RDF project, which is sort of a high level view. But we were really moving towards an evidence based approach. If you have an entity like a chemical or a gene or a protein, a disease or something, is there something that we can then point to that says, provides evidence that this thing even exists? You know, as I mentioned in a paper, as I mentioned in a patent, since most uh, biological activities for a chemical is found in the patent literature one to three years before you ever find it in the biomedical literature, the patent literature is very important for us. Is there some data set about this thing, right? If you talk about fair data, you know, you, just because you have a chemical, if you just made it up and you put some links to it, you know, how do we get filter those out? Or if you had mistakes uh, when people uh, share information of some form. So we're really moving towards a platform where if we have an entity, we look for something that really proves it exists. We have a PMID, a DOI, there's some ontology or terminology that comes from a source that we could cite that says this is something that's real. We're trying to grab and pull together this evidence so that we can say, okay, these hundreds of millions of entities that we have which ones do we have evidence for? Which ones do we not? Which ones are better evidence that we, based on the user's uh, idea of what better is? And as you pull and gather this content together, you get some sense of, of which things are real, which ones aren't. But not just that, you know, can we find you know, the entities between entities, these types of links? Is there any type of evidence we can find for those? Because there's so many of these connections you know, there's got to be a lot of these that are just uh, junk or that you could put a, a factor of time. If you have a link between a chemical and a gene that's from the 1980s and you don't see any links since then, even though you may have thousand publications, you might want to filter those out because it, it either has been disproven or it's no longer important. So we're really at this sort of uh, phase in open information where you have these very large collections of open content when it comes to documents, you think about PubMed. You have about 30 million articles, also a European uh, PMC. But depending on the types of information that you care about, uh, agricultural data, scientific data, general science, there's about 150 million unique identifiers of some form of documents that is some scientific entity or something that would be tied to uh, scientific literature that we would care about. There's also tens of millions of patent publications, about 100 million patent documents worldwide that have some semblance of uh, something that we may want to end up um, pointing into. So as we move more towards these evidence-based displays, we've created these so-called knowledge panels where we're just using really simple co-occurrence using text mining of the entities that are most commonly co-associated with your entity. And you can't quite see uh, there, but this is a part of a, um, a page from uh, PubChem where it shows other chemicals that are co-associated with Gleevec. 
it would tell you what are the names that are associated uh, to the entity that's there that we picked out, and then give you here are the documents that are, are talking about these two things. You know, here are the review articles, and you can just click and download all this content yourself. But really, all we're doing at this point is we're we're doing applied text mining and allow you to access and interact with that content. It's clearly stated evidence. Uh, you've got names, few IDs, you can download and work with it. But we're also doing not just with chemicals, but chemicals of disease. Chemicals to targets, where a target could be a gene, a protein, a pathway, a cell line, and so on. But also, you can invert these. If you have a, a given target, you know, what links do you find to other chemicals? What uh, targets uh, are co-associated with this target? What diseases are co-associated with this target? give you some idea or some semblance of what are the things that are most commonly found associated with the thing that I care about. We call these knowledge panels, we have more than 100,000 for each set. Uh, in the case of chemical chemical, there's about 250,000 chemicals that have these types of displays for targets and diseases, about 125,000. Uh, but the neat thing here is you can download, you can work with these, you have all the evidence right there. But the problem that we have is that there are many other things that may look like a gene or may look like a, a protein or a disease that are not. Uh, I'm, my background is in uh, quantum chemistry uh, way, way back when I got my PhD. So when I saw this, I saw, you know, uh, peripheral myelin protein 2, MP2, and I think, oh my goodness. Um, when I looked at the titles that are there, this happened to be for benzene, and looking at the, the targets associated with it, the top three were levels of theory, having to do with uh, molar plesset uh, uh, two and a uh, couple clustered singles and double type uh, quantum theory, and not genes that you would otherwise expect that, that would be co-associated. We found sort of a quintessential example called MIPA, which is monoisopropylamine, but could also be a gene, a measurement, an organization, a company name, an action, an award, you name it. You know, MIPA is everything and anything. Mm -hmm. And so as you try to deconvolute the entities that are there, it gets way more complicated. You have a set of terms. It contains a chemical, you know, aspirin-mediated thrombosis or something like that. Well, you know, where does the chemical begin and where does the disease end, sort of a situation you might come in, uh, into. But we also find issues and problems where proteins, chemicals, and diseases overlap quite strongly, also organism names, where you have a problems just figuring out what is going on. So we've been using uh, terminologies of various types. Uh, we have about 1,000 so far that we've been working with. Um, just download everything that you can find in the NCBO uh, and others. Uh, you can classify some of the, the, the pieces on the top to figure out which ones are chemical, which ones are organisms, processes, and whatnot. And so we've been trying to figure out, you know, what are some of the ways that we could figure out the context of some of these uh, links so that we can otherwise deconvolute them in some way that would be helpful to know that we have a gene, know that we have a chemical, and so on. But definitely a work in progress. But what's really neat is there are so many of them available to us, and they look to be tremendously useful to then point to somebody and say, hey, you know, this is a real thing. And, you know, you've got um, EPA, uh, you have Wiktionary, you know, the Wikimedia uh, part, where you have millions of terms. And so you know, when you put all this together, you can find pretty much every entity that's found within PubMed, you can start to associate and say, oh, I think I know what that thing is. But there are also many other collections, uh, especially sets uh, from Uniprot, Hugo, PubChem, and whatnot where you get hundreds of millions of other types of uh, terms or entities that are of importance in some way. But you might ask, you know, are we chasing windmills? You know, Don Quixote, you know, charging after the windmill, he thinks it's some monster. You know, if you try and do this type of work, there are so many entities, um, so many entities with the same name. You know, if you don't understand the context, you're not going to get it right. But we believe that we can get things into a well-stated form we can tell you with some confidence or some probability that this is a chemical and so on. In summary, I just want to say that um, we're using these entities, we're trying to improve the quality of the links inside PubChem in part by looking for some form of evidence. 
We think we should be able to conquer this maybe in the next three to five years, <laughs> if we're lucky. And uh, if you're interested at all in this work, uh, please come see me in the Bio Hackathon. Thank you very much. Uh, just to thank PubChem, uh, special thanks, uh, and um, may everybody have a, a great and productive Bio Hackathon 2018. Thank you.